In this video, we will continue the examination of Rudolf Spielmann's classic book The Art of Sacrifice in chess. Today's topic is the line clearance sacrifice. Spielmann distinguishes between the passive and the active line clearance sacrifices, and the game I'm gonna show you is a good example of the former. That is when a pawn, or even two pawns, as is the case in our game, are allowed to be captured in order to obtain the open files for the rooks. This game is also a great illustration of a brutal punishment for the violation of the basic opening principles. Spielmann started with e4, and after e5 he opted for the Vienna game, knight c3, knight f6, f4, d5, f takes e, knight takes e4, knight f3, and here instead of a natural developing move, bishop e7, which would prepare the short castle, black played bishop g4, which looks a little bit unnatural. Spielmann played queen e2 and attacked the knight on e4 for the second time, threatening to capture on e4 and win a pawn. And if black's previous move, bishop g4, was simply an unnatural move, black's next move is a serious mistake. Instead of the correct knight takes c3, black played knight c5, moving the same piece for the third time in the opening, while the other pieces are still undeveloped and the king is still in the center. This is the violation of the opening principles and black will be punished for this. And this move also lets white make a tempo move, d4, with tempo occupying the center with a pawn and opening the bishop's diagonal. But now we can see black's idea behind these strange moves, behind bishop g4 and knight c5. Black eliminates the defender of the h4 square the knight first, and captures on f3, which is in itself a dubious decision, because now white gets the advantage of two bishops. And after queen takes f3, queen h4 check followed, which again is the violation of the opening principles, because it is the early queen development in the opening, while the other pieces are still undeveloped and the king is still in the center, it isn't recommended to develop the queen. However, this isn't just check. This is a double attack, because the unguarded pawn on d4, which is in its turn attacking the knight on c5, is also under attack. And the only way to save this pawn, which is a valuable central pawn, would be queen f2. However, this would have led to the exchange of the queens, and after this, the knight would have occupied a great blockading square on e6, would have attacked the pawn on d4, and defended the weakness on c7. So after knight takes d5, c7 would have been protected, and black would have simply played uh, c6 and consolidate the position, and the position would have been more or less equal in this case. And that means that in this case, all those violations of the opening principles would have left unpunished. And Spielmann couldn't allow that. That's why, after queen h4 check, he didn't agree to the exchange of the queens and decided to sacrifice his pawn and played g3, attacking the queen. And black captured on d4. However, this lets white make another tempo move. Bishop e3, developing the bishop with tempo, attacking the queen and opening the king's way to the queen side. And on the queen side, the king will be safe. And the rook on d1 would be greatly placed, very actively placed, as after the disappearance of d4 pawn, the d file has become a half open file, and the rook from, from d1 will exert a strong pressure on black's position. So the queen is under attack, that's why black captured the second pawn, queen takes e5, and Spielmann, of course, castled queenside. And now we can see how much white got for the sacrificed. Pawns. First, white is greatly ahead in development. All white pieces are developed except the rook on h1. And the rook needs simply the light squared bishop to move away and open its way to the cherished e1 square, from which it will come into play with great effect as after the disappearance of e5 pawn, the e file is open and the king is placed on this file. So, White didn't just get a great advantage in development for the sacrificed pawns, but also got the opportunity to uh, place its rooks on the open 
central files as after the disappearance of d4 and e5 pawns d and e files are open and white rooks will dominate on these files and now let's look at black position so black pieces aren't developed the king is stuck in the center the only developed developed pieces are the knight and the queen the queen is constantly becoming the target of attack and that means white's sacrifice was absolutely justified and also after long castle the d5 pawn currently is under attack so black played c6 now although white has a great advantage in development this advantage isn't static it is dynamic advantage and if black manages to castle and black needs simply two moves to castle either bishop e7 and short castle or knight d7 and long castle and if black manages to do it then black king will be absolutely safe and uh, white's <clears throat> advantage in development uh, will simply disappear it will vanish and uh, black will stay with two extra pawns and a winning position that means white must play energetically white must start the attack while the king is still in the center and you can pause the video and find how Spielmann started his strong, devastating attack on Black King. So, after sacrificing two pawns, Spielmann sacrifices his knight. Knight takes d5, c takes d, rook takes d5. Again with tempo, the queen is again under attack. And after the knight sacrifice, the d file isn't simply a half open file. It's an absolutely open file and the rook is dominating on this file so the queen is under attack and um, black played queen e6 uh, this move as you will see is losing on the spot instead it would have been better to play queen c7 however in this case also uh, black is losing so white uh, in this case moves the bishop from the e file with tempo so that the rook comes into play faster with greater effect. Bishop f4 attacking the queen. The queen must move. Queen b6. And Spielmann gives the following variations. Bishop takes b8. Rook takes b8. And a strong move. Queen f4 attacking the uh, rook again with tempo. And taking under control the important dark squares. And now if rook d8 then another sacrifice. Bishop b5 check sacrificing the bishop in order to open the rook's way to the cherished e1 square with tempo and after queen takes b5 rook e1 check bishop e7 and of course in accordance with um, the rules of romantic chess another sacrifice rook takes e7 check and after king takes e7 queen e5 check now if king f8 then simply rook takes d8 check and checkmate next move and if knight e6 then of course the queen is lost or after queen f4 instead of rook d8 if rook c8 then again bishop b5 check queen takes rook e1 check rook takes e7 check then queen d6 check an important move king uh, e8 and rook e5 check and the only move is knight e6 and the queen again is lost however this would have been better because after queen e6 which was the case in our game black lost on the spot spielman made a strong move bishop c4 again a tempo move opening the rook's way to e1 with tempo because white has created another threat an immediate threat white bishop is attacking the queen it has created the x-ray very unpleasant x-ray and white is threatening simply to capture on c5 with a rook and attack the queen by the bishop because the bishop will be defended by the rook from c5 in this case that's why black must move the queen again so black simply didn't have time to develop the pieces in this game and black played queen e4 attacking white queen and hoping to exchange the queens so if white captures on e4 the knight will capture the queen on e4 is defended and in this case white's tremendous pressure would ease would have eased however after spielman's next move black immediately resigned
you can pause the video and try to find Spielmann's move. What to do? The queen on f3 is under attack. So Spielmann sacrifices his queen. He eliminates the defender of the queen, the knight on c5, and opens the rook's way to e1, um, so completely opens the e-file, so that rook e1 comes with greater effect. So bishop takes c5. What to do? The queen is under attack. The defender is eliminated. There is no knight on c5 anymore. And black simply resigned. This isn't a real sacrifice, as Spielmann writes. This is a sham sacrifice, as there is no risk involved, because the consequences of this sacrifice can be easily calculated. If queen takes f3, then simply rook e1 check, and checkmate in two moves would have followed in this case. That's why after bishop takes c5, black simply resigned. Hit the like button as it's really helpful for the channel growth and subscribe. See you in next videos.